Hey, what's up, guys? It is DJ. We've got some new and updated mods to take a look at today for Farming Simulator 22 early mods on a Monday. It totals 17 mods were released. All platforms got nine new and four updates. A PC and Mac players got three new and one update. Of course, we're going to take a look at all the new ones plus customization, and we'll review every mod that got an update. Additionally, we're going to take a look at the Chrome Squadron that released on Saturday since it just got a short video yesterday. And yeah, the uh, warehouse in front of you, it's like the coolest thing ever. Let's check it out. Starting off with new ones for all platforms, we have something extremely exciting. This is the liftable pallets for premium expansion from Yos Modding. All pallets from the premium expansion products have been replaced with new pallets, weighing only 100 kilograms each. So, for example, we could buy ourselves a pallet of parsnip soup. We could run over here and pick it up. Each pallet can also be bought from the store, as you saw there. There you go. And just to show you super strength, now it is enabled. And I'll go ahead and turn off super strength, disabled, and I can still pick it up and move it around. It's pretty cool. Uh, he does say that because the premium DLC files are not public, the contents of the pallets is hidden inside the boxes. So it doesn't look like the ones that we have uh, in game with the DLC. We have kind of brand new pallets, more or less. Also, uh, this does not work for any item spawned or purchased before activating the mod, so that is important to know as well. However, just like all of his other liftable pallets mods, all you gotta do is add your production chains from premium. <laughs> Let's see if we can spin through right here. Uh, premium, okay, so we have Soup Factory. We can throw this down on any map that we have, and whenever it starts producing the pallets, they will be the liftable ones, making it really easy to use this mod on console. Oh, so exciting. Oh, and it works on every map. As you can see, we're on Elm Creek. Next up, we have the Puncher Cat Pack. This is a pack of two mowers from Mowers for your tractors. Uh, we've got a 2.7 and a 3.1 meter work with version. First off, the 270. This is a 2.7 meter work with 12 miles an hour, requires 50 horsepower, weighs about six tenths of a ton. Swathing path, we have standard. We also have the multi Test, which is pretty interesting. We'll take a look at that. And then we have warning signs of yes or no on the front. Main color, that's going to be your tarp. And then we have design color, which I believe is going to be around towards the back side. Yeah, just a little bit of a change on the rubber there. I do like the plastic rubber versus black plastic. Very interesting. And as mentioned, we also have the 3.1 meter version, 12 miles per hour, 60 horsepower here as well, 55 horsepower. So just a little bit more, may as well go with the larger one if you need it. Swathing so plate again, we have the standard or the multitask. We have the warning signs and then we have the exact same color setups here. Let's take a look at these and see if there's any difference between the versions. So the first one that we're going to hook up to is the standard version, the one without the multitask. Well, Take a look here. Oh, the PTO gets set to the side as well. All right, that's pretty cool. I like that. That's awesome. All right, we'll take a look here. We can unfold. So we have unfolding of the side. We have, of course, the lower mower. And then we have, oh, that is neat. You can see I've got full control over folding and unfolding. So I can hit that. That's going to do it on its own. Or I can bring it back down. And then there you go. One of the things is the fold and unfold is still there. So you're still going to have to hit that, I think just so the game knows, hey, it's unfolded, you, you're welcome. So let's unhook from that. Doesn't look like there's anything too wild and crazy, except for the way that we can manage that. Hook it up here. Do we have anything extra? So we'll unfold this. Of course, you can see there at the front, we have a couple things. Toggle, working mode. Aha! So that is gonna change things up drastically. That is pretty darn cool. All right, so you want a skinny swath, I guess? Go with there. And then wider, wider, and a wider swath, same size as the machine. I don't know if we've seen much like that before. That is super cool. Next, we have the Immense Pack from Vertex Design. This is actually something that we've seen in Farming Simulator before, and actually, I got to see these in real life last week. They are absolutely massive, and never would have thought. So let's take a look at them. This is the Coulter 3.0. This is going to be your subsoiler. So this kind of goes in the front, 130 horsepower, three meters at seven miles an hour design. We have a standard. We can also throw some warning signs on the back if you wish. Now, moving over, we have this guy, the 38SX. This is a spader, so of course prepares for the next field and can be used instead of plowing. Now, in real life, you would use these separately in the game. They kind of do something very similar. So this will be more for like role play settings and that type of thing. But 
it's nice to see a new spader coming to the game. We rarely get these. Three meter worker with four miles an hour, 100 horsepower, 2.5 ton weight by itself. Warning signs, there you go. We've also got the tractor triangle, and then we've got attachments. We could throw a hitch on the back of that, meaning that you could technically, you don't need to do this, but you could technically go subsoiler, and then spader, and then throw a cedar on the back of that if you want to, or you could just do spader and throw a cedar on there. Do we have three point? I don't think there's three boy pass through, but it'll still work. And just because we can, because I think it'll look really, really funny. Let's hook up to the subsoiler. Let's hook up to the spader. Ooh, it's getting a little bit heavy back there. And then we can hook up to this guy, which is just ridiculous yet again. Uh, yeah, no PTO pass through. So I would say unfortunate, but I don't think we expected much else. So drop it down, drop it down, drop it down. And you could go, but like I mentioned in the game, this is pretty ridiculous. Next, we've got a stone picker. This is the Lizard DH25 from JM Garcia. There's also a PC only version of this that we're gonna take a look at a little later in the video. It holds 2.5 thousand liters of stones, weighs 2.3 tons, 150 horsepower, 2.5 meter working width, nine miles an hour, a lot of 2.5s on there. Wheel brands, we have Nokia tires. We can also throw Trelleborgs, Continental, Michelin, Midas and Vredestein. So we have a lot of different choices there. Uh, registration, we've got it on the left or the right or both if you really want to go for it. Color of the chassis, all of the above. This may look familiar to you. This is the 82 Studio color palette. So let's go with Nitro Blue Age. Then we have the color drawers. Let's go with a nice John Deere Age green spike color. Let's go with a nice little bright blue and then color extras. Let's go with some yellow. That's going to be everything along the sides. Of course, we also have rim colors, which will make red. And there you go. I think this may be the most customizable rock picker in the game. Next, we have the flatbed trailer. This weighs 8.1 tons, so it is a bigger trailer. Main color, we've got all of the above. And then rim colors, again, all of the above. We'll kick that light gray on there. Or, eh, base game grays good enough. Do we have a trailer hitch on the back? I'm curious about that. No trailer hitch on the back. So you're going to be running one of these at a time. Next up, let's go over some placeables that we got. And the first one is the large logistics warehouse. This is from Pascal Couts and we have two versions. The version right here on our right is going to be one that has pallet storage, 450 pallets, I may add. Now, we also have the version here on the left hand side, which is just the regular one. These things are not cheap, $481,000 a piece. However, the interior is super duper cool and we can remove the roof here and make this warehouse our very own. I'm so excited about this. This is one of the coolest things that I have seen in Farming Simulator yet. You can put placeables inside of a placeable. They figured it out, they got it. So coming through here, I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of uh, the warehouse itself. It is kind of a maze on the inside. There is a lot of area, there's a lot of room. You have to go up to these little uh, uh, trigger points right here in order to do things. We've got three semi-truck bays here. We've also got a couple ground bays as well. Of course, we have one around towards the backside. We have one right here, which is extremely large. You can pull inside, do whatever you want to. So that's kind of that. And we take a look here, we can see we have the smaller hall and then a couple larger halls, but we also have an office area. Now the office area is Pretty cool. We've got the American Parcel Logistics there and everybody's got their laptops and stuff. But if we go upstairs, this is where the magic happens. This is not on the auto load version, by the way. This is only here. If we turn on our help mode, we have build mode on. Let's turn, we'll click that to where it says build mode off and the roof is gone. We'll do it again, now the roof is there. Do it again, now the roof is on. This is where the magic is. So. This is from Pascal Couch. So we're gonna take their mods here. Yeah, these guys. And then we're going to create our own warehouse. So we wanna enable the uh, build mode and then uh, I'm gonna make it to where they kind of snap like that. And you can literally go in here and place down your very own little setup. So we can kind of get maybe all the way gets to well. About right there, that'll work. And then we can just kind of come through here and place down our own things inside the building. I'm sure there's much better ways to do this than, than I have done it here, but uh, you, you're you good to go. 
You could place down any of this stuff anywhere you want inside the building, whether it be on the higher section or maybe down at the lower section. Maybe you want to uh, make fun of your friends whenever they come through and they open it up, open the door and run right into the baller. Uh, you could do that as well. Of course, we could place any of these down. But this also means that we could place down other, <laughs> other things in here as well. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Go into containers. We can throw a... Uh, Overlaps with an object. Ah, it's easy. We'll do that. You you could do this too. I don't know if I've ever seen this before. We put a little refuel station in there. Yeah. And then we'll come over here and turn the build mode off. And well, it sticks through, but <laughs> it's there. It's all there. And it's fully usable. And here we've got that. We've got our silo sticking through the wall. Pesco counts. I'm so sorry. We've got our warehouse, our place where you can work stuff there. And, and even right here. Didn't clip through the wall, nothing like that, because we placed it perfectly. I'm not using PC magic, nothing. This is just the way it works. How cool is that? Again, I, I've never seen anything like that before. We're going to come over here to the auto load version as well, just so you can kind of get a sense of it. So we will go in door D number two. Yeah, and you can see here, everything is already done for us so we can click this button right here uh, so it says load location outside and then we have load location inside so that is neat and then we have our uh, total capacity there where we can kind of check out everything this has to be by far one of the most interesting placeables that we've ever received in farming simulator and i kind of foresee a lot of people taking this idea and running with it from here on out i'm curious what happens when i sell this oh Everything's just kind of hanging out and some of the bits are floating. Guess I'm going to have to go through and delete all of these, huh? Next, we have the Cow Barn 17 by 14. This is from Paisel and we've got a nice little cow barn right here. We'll take a look. Holds 30 cows for as far as food goes, 22,000 liters. Milk, we have 60,000 liters. Straw is 11,000. Ed Slurry is 65,000. Now, we can, uh, well, I say we can boost the milk, but I think... Possibly we already have, because we get this building too, which is a milk extension, silo extension. Then we have a shed, which you could do things with. So if I wanted to kind of go in here and do a little bit of building, we can uh, grab a silo extension and we've got our milk tank right here. We'll kind of uh, delete that overlaps with an object icon. And then we can line this up almost perfectly. It's not actually perfect, but almost to sometime good enough. So you throw that on there, maybe maybe about like right there. Eh, good enough. And then we have the shed. So if we jump over to sheds, we've got that, uh, not right there, right here rather. Then we can just kind of spin it around and put it on the side or put it in the middle of it. Whatever, whatever your heart desires, you could do it. I was also mistaken. It is 30,000 liters for the milk. So the expansion adds on another 30,000 liters. We've also got some storage buildings. This is the storage building pack. And in here, we have a total of five buildings. We have the large storage shelter. We have the small storage shelter, the small storage shelter, the small storage shelter with auto load, which is very cool. And then we have the large storage shelter. <laughs> Confused by naming? Me too, don't worry. Let's go in here, we'll take a look. This is your uh, first one. Very nice, very simple. Also, uh, you can change the color of all the roofs. Very neat. Very, it's, a, it's a feature that they didn't need to add, but they did, and I'm grateful for it. We'll head over here, take a look in here as well. So this one has silos in it. Are these compaction silos or no? No, it doesn't look like it. So we'll kind of open this up. The bay doors are gonna be wherever you're standing in front of. So whatever you're in front of that's going to be the one that opens up we have four bays inside there and here we have the pallet auto loading so inside is going to be where all your pallets uh chill out and then over here of course uh, storage is empty i'm aware and then we have the larger storage building right here slide open we've got a couple separators inside and then uh, i believe three doors two of which are drive through and your last new one for today is going to be the felsbrin farmhouse from farming simulator 19 in here we've got access to pretty much everything we did back in then so we can kind of come over here take a sleep and it looks like really nothing has been changed. So if you were really excited about that, 
Well, here you go. We've also got the laptop there showing off Felsbrunn from Farming Simulator 19, a giant's editor. That is pretty darn cool. Also, there was a mod that was released on Saturday. I did a short of this yesterday, but just in case you missed it, we got the Chrome Squadron TC1370 to celebrate Agritechnica. It's from BM Modding. I had a chance to meet one of the guys from BM Modding, which was super duper cool. On here, we have an 80 horsepower requirement, 13.7 meter working with, and 9 miles an hour. Wheel brands include Rattestein, Nookie, and Tires are back in again. We're going to go with Nookie and Y number twos. Then we have the four and six wheels that are available on the side, and then working lights. We have that as well. Let's go ahead and get one of those. Let's get ourselves a uh, tractor that should be able to handle this without too much trouble, and we're going to hook up to it. I want to show you how to expand this uh, just kind of in detail. That way you don't have any questions and you're good to go. So we'll grab a hold of this. We will unfold it because that is the first thing we need to do. You can also just click lower I think, yeah, that does not work. So we have to unfold it first. Usually with equipment like this, you can simply click the uh, fold up. Oh. Uh, Deej, go ham, push the wrong button at the wrong time. Don't do what I just did. Make sure you unfold it first. <clears throat> Moving on. Once it is unfolded, boom, and then boom. I believe that's going to be extended out to its full 13.7 meter working width, but we can also bring it out to 10.8 if we use mouse control. So whoop and whoop. So you could do that if you want to, and really anything in between, you can customize how large you want that. Jumping over to our mod updates for our platform, so we have the Klaus Jaguar 82880. This is version 102, added custom long pipe, and added interactive control by Vertex Design. Next is the Lizard RT16 version number two. Reconstructed the model with new textures. Thirdly, we have the Horizontal Fodder Mixer version 1.2. The possibility to produce seed has been added thanks to Pysel for making it available. They've also reduced the volume of the sounds and snow has been added. And your last update for all platforms today is the Grisetto CMD Pack. This is version 201. They added new height for the side height configuration, added new brand color configuration, and various minor functional fixes to the machine. Jumping over to our new ones for PC and Mac players, we got a couple Teagle mods today from Sidmonic at JHHG. First one is going to be the T2 Bell Shredder attachment type. We've got one for the Manitou. We also have Telehandler and Front Loader and Stool. So if you want that, you're good. And JCB. So very, very cool. And then, of course, just standard skid loader, standard wheel loader, and back in. So connections for pretty much everything. Throw a uh, straw bell in there, and you can blow it out for bedding. It weighs 810 kilograms, so be careful with your front loader. Make sure you got a weight on the back, and it requires 60 horsepower. Secondly is another Tico mod. This is the Titan 17 Manure Spreader. We've got manure and lime, which is very, very nice. Uh, 20.1 thousand liter capacity on there, 170 horsepower, 16 meters at nine miles per hour. Wheel brands include Trellebog, Michelin, Midas, and back in, and we've got standard and wide tires for those. And your last new one for PC and Mac players, the Los Antonios DH25. This is just like the Lizard uh, DH25 that we showed off earlier in the video for all platforms, so we won't really go over it too much. Of course, we have all the same color options, same registration, and same wheel setup, and of course, same specs. At your last mod today, we have an update for PC players on the Camaro RT16. This is exactly like the Lizard RT16 was earlier, version number two, reconstructed the model with new textures. Well guys, that is it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, get subscribed if you're new, and join the GoHam fam. Make sure that notification bell's on as well, that way you never miss daily farming simulator videos here on the channel. Let me know what your favorite mod was today. Let me know what you're gonna do with this warehouse, and if there's any mod that you're like, hey, that was awesome. Let me know. Otherwise, just hope you have a great day and awesome start to your week this happy Monday. We'll see you later.